This conference will now be recorded. In theory, we're we set to roll. <laughs> <laughs> all right, hey, I'll call the. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can you folks hear me? All right. I barely hear Kevin. Is he there? Can you hear me? I can hear you, Kevin. Silence is golden. You know how that works. So. <laughs> can you hear me? Test one, two, three, four. Gene can hear me fine. You're up. All right. Okay, as long as you can hear me, we'll call the uh, Lake Stevens Sewer District um, uh, Committee to order, and I'll turn it over to our chair, uh, Commissioner Wright. Okay, we'll go ahead and begin our utility committee meeting for February 22nd, and let's start it with the same pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so as far as the roll call for the Lake Stevens Commissioner, we have Kevin Koshy, Dan Lawrence, and myself, Andrea Wright. And for the city, Gary Petershagen, Brett Gailey, and Don, Ryan Donahue. Got it. <laughs> and excellent city staff and sewer district staff. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up for a public forum. Is there are any anybody from the visit in the community who'd like to speak to the utilities committee meeting? I'm not seeing. Don't all jump out at once. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll go ahead and close the public forum and move on to information sharing. So our first order of business is the annexations. I think uh, on this one, I think I brought it up last meeting, and I think uh, Mayor Gailey was going to get an update in terms of how we can get these 2,000 people to be able to vote. You said you were going to talk about it at our retreat. At our retreat. And then we also asked that it, or suggested that it be included in the, what do you guys call this? Unification of the agreement. Yeah. yeah. That didn't happen, so. Kevin, I'll be honest with you. I did not follow up on that. That's on me. Um, okay. But I, I will do for our next meeting. Fair enough. Any other discussion on that? Okay, so second, the accelerated assumption update with Dan and Gary. Okay, so I just, I guess I would just start a little bit, and I know that uh, Councilman Member Peter Shigan and me, not as often as we used to, just because we were, you know, I think holidays have been done away, and we were working on this and trying to get this assumption agreement, but we are back in the saddle again, I guess, if you want to put some sort of country theme to it. Um, and, and start working for it. I know that there was the agreement that was sent over to the city and I wouldn't expect you guys to have it read verbatim and, and ready to go in that context because um, there's stuff to it and obviously you folks are looking at it um, from that perspective. I think one thing that I would just try to say is I know that we were trying to make it as complete because I think I've mentioned in previous meetings, this isn't the opportune time that we would come back each time, oh, we forgot something. It would be a it would be a document that was all inclusive to be able to go through and you know that there's nothing else left to put there other than once we negotiate things and we be done. Um, I guess what I would suggest um, from this looking at this document is if the committee would would give the latitude to myself and the council member Peter Shaken to be kind of a point of contact to start working on this thing to see if we can come to a, an agreement on how this is going to work because there's a lot there and I would say that we would do this in the context that we would go um, section by section and, you know try to get an agreement to I guess what I envision to a degree would be almost like when you're negotiating a 
uh, um, any contract like our, our CDAs um, that as we get to there and we do both sides agree to that deal, we TA something and we move to the next step versus having a, I guess, public dog fight, which, you know, arguing over language and everything, I don't think that's going to be conducive in there that each side we can slowly work on this stuff and get it done. We've come this far, I think, my perspective. So that, I guess, is my two minutes on it. But uh, I know there's a lot there and you guys have probably just looked at it within the last couple of days because when you got it, we got it. You know, as in its final form. So, I mean, yeah. council member Peterson. Was we received it, I believe, because we were at our retreat, and so we didn't have an opportunity to look at it then. We did discuss it, presented to council last night, and just came kind of an overview as mm -hmm. what's going on. This is where we're at. Um, I would agree with you that I think it's, you know, with any proposal, there's things that we agree and some things that we don't, the easiest part to go through and figure out what we agree on, Absolutely. get those off the table, and then start working on the things that we don't agree on. So try to find some middle ground on everything and work through it. So, and with that, I mean, I would say that uh, if we were to do that, I would say that, you know, it would probably take uh, a couple of weeks to respond to it if, if we were going to go your proposed route. So, so I don't have a problem with you two going over it, but I think what first has to happen is our legals need to get together. Our legal has uh, quite a few issues with the legality of some of the points in it. So I think that that would be a first step to get the document legal and then um, get into some hashing out the details, which I'll be honest with you, I was very disappointed in several of these points that we've been talking about over the last year and they're completely opposite of what we've been talking about over the last year. Um, but I think the first step is to have the legals look at it and get the document actually legal, and then and then have you and Dan and or Gary and Dan uh, try to hash it out if you two are willing to do that uh, before it goes back to the body. Yeah, I think if there's a path in my, I'm oh, sorry. Um, I would just say if there's a path if legal wants to take a look at it in that aspect and they and they they come to some sort of I guess agreement in 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 terms of what they're looking at. I mean, I'm not really sure what you're saying by to make it legal, but there might be some things that we want to have some some uh, guardrails on what we're doing. But I think that if that does come there, that we start looking at certain things and we work on a section by section, so we're all prepared when we come in. We say, hey, we're going to look at section two this week that that's what it is I, i'm prepared for section two you're prepared for two not i was at one and you're at three and and then we just we're wasting time i think that if we come up with that but i would let the other folks of the committee talk about it i think from the legal standpoint it's more the our city attorney would like to talk with your attorney to clarify something oh, so absolutely that's yeah. that that that's all true. makes sense to that all makes sense to me i i, I would encourage i think um the the two representative approach has gotten us this far and i don't know unless there's a compelling reason to do something different i think that makes the most sense um and can funnel through through that avenue um i guess the the one thing i would say uh, or maybe repeat is when we when an agreement is negotiated the, the i guess the ideal outcome is that both parties are either equally unhappy or equally happy but agreeable to go forward in that manner and from um from this commissioner's perspective the request the respectful request from the city to shorten the contractual time frame from 10 years to three or something less is a significant concession from the district's perspective and so um, certainly from a starting standpoint, I believe it's fair to ask for some concessions, certainly in the approach from the city side, maybe not equal to that, but certainly some level of concessions to be able to make sure that, um, you know, this gets implemented in the most effective manner for the, our joint constituents. So just large concession asking for a seven years off what was originally agreed to so but i think there's room for us to work through it and i think working through um dan and gary's our, our best chance for success
So agreement to move forward. Yeah, so I would suggest that um, uh, Greg get a hold of whoever wrote this for you on the attorney side to talk to the attorney stuff. Jordan, yeah, I mean, I think Jordan is our, our primary point of contact with Anderson Hunter. And if there's any other questions that we do have, okay. Uh, but yeah, no, absolutely. If that if that's going to expedite it in that sense, because I know our legal has asked questions if we've heard, you know, where, where the process was at, because obviously anytime something was sent out, legal's always gonna want to know. So we knew that you folks were just getting it. And I think uh last night was the first opportunity that Gary and I had the opportunity to sit down and you know, kick the can around a little bit and, and kind of digest it and you know, I kind of brought up the idea, just saying, hey, how about we continue it in the form that we're doing that and try to come up with a, a workable solution that everybody coming in the same room and staring at each other and maybe end up doing something different that's not conducive to anything. Yeah, I, I think that's a great idea. I would suggest the attorneys go first and it, it may reduce Absolutely. the amount of workload you guys have, but whatever they're able to uh, work out between their differences, so yeah. Great. Any other discussion on that? Okay, the only thing I'd say, the only other thing I'd offer, just to Mayor Gailey's comment, is I agree. Let the attorneys go first. But if we get to a point where they're hashing out something legal, does this fall in this? I would ask them identify the because there's a lot of pieces that aren't don't have anything to do with legalese that we need to negotiate. So let's let them make a first cut. But if they need to continue to work on something, I would suggest that we be open to a parallel at that point. Yes, go, you know, it's fine for you to go carve out on these sections or, or these differences of opinion. We'll work on the legal thing in parallel. So I just would like to, let's keep it open to a parallel because I'd like to, I'd like to get the closure sooner than later. And I just don't want to see the attorney, if they're spinning on one item, not to hold up maybe the other three things that aren't related to what they're, you know, they're working through, if that makes sense. I'm with Kevin. Yep. And just Absolutely. so you guys know, Greg. Greg already reached out to Jordan. I was copying on it. So it was at 251 today. Perfect. It's a billable hour for all involved. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anybody else? Okay, great. Let's go ahead and move on to the project review of the six capital projects have been waiting for permits for a year. So I think, Aaron, you handed this document out. Yes, I did. So I don't know if you want to address it or Mariah, how do you want to? Uh, we don't have a, <clears throat> we didn't discuss it and develop a plan before. Oh, okay. So it'll be organic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. That's good. Uh, well, I, I took a look at the, um, the land use applications and I summarized the two uh, in the document I handed out. Um, they're, they're applications that were submitted one after another. They're numbered 49 and 50. Um, one is for a gravity main, the other is for a new force main. Um, I don't, I don't know exactly why two applications were submitted um, for this project. That's kind of up to the applicant how they want to divide and, and, and deal with their projects. Um, I don't, I don't think that's absolutely necessary. But it, neither here nor there. We have two applications. Um, Sixty percent um, submittal was received uh, quite a while ago. 4422 and 60% plans are typically used for um, getting through SEPA. So some of the, the long lead time land use permit issues. Um, so, uh, you know, as a, as a uh, maybe not a courtesy, but sort of in collaboration, we took 60% plans and said, let's get, let's get you through SEPA. 60% plans generally aren't something that engineers dive into heavily uh, because they're just still somewhat draft. Uh, the team, the engineers did review it, gave a comment letter. Uh, well, they gave an incomplete letter, which is common for 60% uh, submittal. Okay, the, the city issued an incomplete letter on uh, uh, April 20th, 2022, identified those four bulleted items that were missing. Not the end of the world, very common. Um, the, the applicant resubmitted uh, on the 22nd. Uh, the city issued a complete completeness letter on the, the 2nd of May. Uh, and the com completeness letter, that's a tough word, uh, essentially says we've got everything, we have everything we need, okay, to get through SEPA, to start to get through some of these land use things, shoreline exemptions, things like that. It does not mean the documents are, are, are approved or have been reviewed for that matter. 
Uh, fire approved them on the 5th because fire generally doesn't care what you do with sewer underground. <laughs> Uh, Till there's a small gas explosion. Yeah. <laughs> um, so fire is just, you know, they're checking the box. Uh, Public Works issued comments on 928. Uh, that is a, a three and a half month uh, lead time on review. Longer than we want, not inconsistent with the project um, like this. Uh, they noted that ramps and crosswalks impacted by the project must meet ADA requirements. Uh, the, the applicant went back revised their plan, submitted 90% drawings on 1114 that address the ADA uh, ramp issues. And then on one January 27th of this year, submitted a maximum extent feasible and a revised set of drawings as well. Um, and that's consistent with ADA requirements for a project that impacts ramps like this one does. I know it's a sewer project, it doesn't seem like it would impact ADA ramps, because you're paving up against the face of the curb, you have to upgrade the ramps. The maximum extent feasible documentation is we can't meet some ADA requirement uh, because of topography or some challenge. We are going to uh, get to go to the maximum extent feasible. It's very common. Um, I understand this is a long review process. It's a big project. Um, um, and, and there's been some back and forth. At the same time, the, the force mains kind of been following this same process. I think we're actually kind of just reviewing them the same uh, concurrently. So any comments that came on 49 are gonna apply to 50 with regard to restoration. We still don't have 100% plans. So the way this should work for capital projects is the city ultimately receives 60% is fine, 90% is fine, but we need to really receive 100% drawings at this point um, because we will, your engineer will stamp the 100% drawings the city will stamp the 100% drawings and those are your construction plans. When our inspectors show up in the field, they're going to ask for your construction plans and want to see our stamp on them. So just um, when you bid this project, you're going to want to bid that 100%. Of course you would, but you're going to want to bid what's approved by the city as well. <clears throat> At least it should definitely contain the approved drawings from the city. You can add additional sheets if you need it for your, your particular project. So at this point, um, I actually have some, after I, I carefully reviewed the, the plans uh, yesterday and today, I have a few concerns. Um, there's a culvert that's missing on 20th Street Northeast, east of 125th Street. I don't quite know why it's missing, but it looks like you have a force main going right through it. So, um, or hanging on it, but it's corrugated metal pipe. So I don't know how, you, anyway, not the end of the world. We should definitely look at it. Uh, the ADA ramps look good. That's not gonna hold us up. Some of the pavement restoration gives me some pause. Um, I just wanna advise you on that. If you're gonna dig deep trenches, we've been down this road in South Lake Stevens. Uh, let's make sure we have a plan for adequate compaction. What tends to happen with deep trenches, as you know, uh, is they want to um, drop material into the trench and it's really hard to come back, compact uh, laterally. <laughs> Once you have a trench, you put gravel in, you pack it, but it doesn't want to move that way and you get settling. And so we need to, we need to uh, make sure that when our road is restored, we don't have sinking issues. One of the other issues I have on the project is there's a trench line that goes right by the weir at the lake outlet. We have, a, we have water flowing through the road, underneath the, the surface of the road around the weir that we are failing. I'm worried about it from a constructability standpoint. You're gonna have a lot of water entering your trench. Um, that's not gonna hold up your permit review. It's gonna be something when you bid it, you're gonna be, want to be aware of dewatering. Anyway, what I need from you is 100% drawings. That's what we need. <clears throat> Russ, did you wanna add anything? No, Aaron, you did a great job covering that. That's everything that we talked about um, earlier today. Hey, John, when are you guys planning on doing this project? Uh, we're waiting to get permits in hand before we bid it, but like as soon as we can. Hey, Russ and Aaron, how does this impact our Main Street redevelopment? That's what Aaron is. Yeah. And 
we should talk about that too. That would be one of our, our comments or at least ideas. Um, there might be an opportunity to uh, save some money on paving. How far are you guys going down the street? Are you going from 17th all the way to 16th? Or you... The project ultimately is going to be grade road at the fire north end of the fire station all the way down to 16th. Okay. So you guys are going to be working in there a fair amount. The key is whether or not we can survive with cold patch on Main Street for a year. And I don't think we want to. Yeah. Anyway, it's it's a very busy area of the city to be putting in sanitary sewers. So let's get it let's get it right the first time. Yeah, and and, and I'm just throwing gel on the wall. So um, does the cost benefit analysis do you push it? to next year when we're doing the Main Street project, does that save costs? And again, I'm just... Well, because the timeline, so, uh, the lead time on some of the equipment, we've already made some preemptive purchases okay. on that. So extending that timeline would be a bit of a hassle. Okay. Yeah. Um, it yeah. also impacts a lot of other capital projects yeah, that are right. in the and, queue. Yeah. They yeah. can't happen until this one happens. Yeah, and, and that could have an impact on downtown redevelopment in the future since those okay. lift stations are critical. Okay, yeah, I just want to ask those questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think save money, great. The opportunity is going to be on the restoration of the paving and, and how we do that. They can save some money on grinding it over. <clears throat> what are they doing to Main Street? I mean, I know the fire district is going to build a new station, yeah. they're going to move it into that, that triangle, and I think there's always been the, the the aspect of moving that, you know, there's probably a hundred thousand dollar telephone pole now at the rate the uh, PUD has to realign yeah, and grade into Maine uh, 20th. Um, what is your project from Post Office South? Is that, are you guys looking to revitalize like the old outflow stream? Because I know that that we did sewer in there years ago and it's all resting on four foot blocks of uh, styrofoam because sure. obviously downtown's a drainage basin and, and uh, that's what's holding up yeah light density fill um russ can probably give you a better idea of what we're doing on main i mean I'm, I'm happy to go ahead russ no go ahead aaron and i can jump in if i need to it's it's sort of turned from a planning project into a capital project at this point so um starting at 16th street uh, we're going to have uh, on-street parking and a multi-use path on the west side of the road, continue with the sidewalk. Uh, you're going to see um, uh, improvements in, like, the, the, for example, the street lights that we have near Mill Spur, where we live. Those, 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 uh, those would be consistent. Um, uh, sort of that section. And now once you get to the church, mm -hmm. 127, I don't remember what cross street. Anyway, um, it's going to, it's going to sort of, uh, widen a little bit there um, uh, for some additional on-street parking and then narrow at 18th street like it is now if you go down there and look at the way we bulbed out the mill spur the other side um, is 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 correct actually and so it narrows down for traffic combing at that intersection uh, and then we're uh, going to improve the sidewalks on the J's side uh, right narrow those up push the bus lane into the travel lane it's just, just take it out and pretty real pretty consistent it, so. yeah there'll be a roundabout at uh, 20th street and main i don't know exactly what that alignment looks like we're working on that now i realign the intersection of old hartford the one way uh with grade road so that you don't have that odd sort of y feel that's actually somewhat hazardous i uh, have a more of a 90 degree angle uh, pushing that into the fire district property a little bit they're not really using that triangle they're going to push their their fire department to the north um, and pedestrian enhancements uh, in that area and likely a plaza as well the goal is to improve pedestrian right pedestrian connections downtown encourage some commercial development connect this part of the city to the centennial trail divert travelers from the centennial trail through main through main street and back down 16th to connect to the centennial trail um, so a lot of sidewalks, a lot of street lights, a lot of lighting, a fair amount of parking, and a roundabout. Yeah, but I just want to make sure we 
if there was some way to save money, but uh, I think I mean overlay for overlay savings at this point. So this group is interested in. I mean, I know it's off topic, but at the next meeting, I'd be happy to bring back the set of preliminary plans if you're interested. Well, it may have a a you know, like I said, if there's a savings that can be had by some of the projects tying into this sort of detail. Yeah, because that's that's the big thing. You know, you don't want to spend all that money to have it torn up four months later because something else is going yep. in there. And, and I know that we're trying to to be able to enhance those lift stations to be able to meet other development downtown. I mean, I know they're long overdue, especially when you look at one and, and two. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry for the long explanation. No, that's perfect. It's it's nice to have that because the same people that are asking you questions about what we're doing are asking us what you're doing, and it's nice to be all speaking on the same sheet of music, you know, what I'm saying, because you know sometimes, regardless, you know, people just see a a you know unofficial land use notice. Or, whether it's ours or it's yours, and they're like, what's going on? And, you know, they, they can't differentiate. They just look at you as you're an elected official, you should know what's going on. So, <laughs> like, well, I'm happy to bring it back. If you're interested. Do you want to add any other approvals? Okay. Yeah. 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 Ye
you know, I mean, if that project suddenly a pace came back and said the property owners have decided just because the market is not conducive to what they want to do, and ends up like on this with the big N on the back side, right, exactly. <laughs> maybe there's something there that that we look at as as a utility group and say, well, can we move the, uh, another project on our you know our, our list or something like that? That might be done efficient. So I just don't want to. Be in a position where we're sitting waiting on the edge of our chair for the next 12 months. So, when oh, we should have done something six months, months ago. Yeah. yeah. No, that's good. That the should expire in October of this year. So, we will get yeah. okay. something sooner than that. But, yeah. But given market uncertainties, it's not yeah. beyond people saying, you know what? Yeah. Gonna... What does it take for somebody to extend? It's a EA addenda for Just a one year. It requesting get no fees or anything uh they lose their vesting and if they came in before we did a gfc upgrade or update or anything they lose their vesting to that lower via uh, gfc and would be required to pay the higher um but it's a it's a usually a one page no okay. recorded copy so pretty easy <laughs> Okay, anything else on that? All right. You have a chance to review the utility committee meeting minutes for January 25th. I'll move to approve the utility committee meeting minutes from January 25th. Great, is there a second? I'll no, second that. Okay, and then the next I'll meeting. Oh, call for the vote, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Call for the vote on the meeting minutes for January 25th, 2022. All in favor? Aye. 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 No, I don't. <laughs> okay, so next meeting. Do you feel like we need a meeting next month? Yes. I would I would think that I, as indicated by our city administrator, attorneys are already uh, contacting. Uh, or at least reaching out, and I would think that in the next week or two we'll be meeting. Yep. Yeah, so, especially if there's something. I mean, if if they can identify between Greg and Jordan, yeah, that they're going to work on this, and they can say, "How about you two work on that?" And then that gives us. I'm sure we can come back with one paragraph out of the agreement. Um, <laughs> my only concern is just that on the details of it probably should be a separate meeting from the utilities, not a public meeting. Well, you never be a public meeting, but if we go to agree on something, I don't think that it's it's something that we should just sit there and hash it. I think that if if okay. we can come up with a, an agreement in that sense and bring it back to the respective sides that we're all in agreement with that, then we can we can mention that we've teed a or whatever language, if that's what you're looking for, I guess. I think when you're negotiating, you're not always going to want to just put everything in the court of public opinion in right. a sense until you get a finalized agreement. We're trying to understand, but I don't know. I mean, at least that's how I've done um, collective bargaining agreements. You know, we'll go through and we'll TA certain things. I think I think if both sides TA and we lay that down, that you know we approve that and you guys approve that. If you've given each of us the authority once we've all made our initial okays. That that's what we're all we'll both sign on it and say so people are kept up to speed that nothing changes from that point until we reach a final agreement. I think that's where we're at. I you know I I would hope we've built enough trust with one another that you know if we have to work on a document that says this is this is the one that we agree on but we're each working off that sheet of paper so everybody can take a look at it because I think ultimately when it's done. The board of commissioners have to give an approval, and it'll eventually have to go back to the entire city council. Yeah. But I think that if we if we can you know, tentatively agree on things and put a TA there and say, okay, you know, we're not going to come back with, oh, gotcha. no. <laughs> okay, so next meeting is on. <laughs> Last Wednesday, right, at 4 p.m.? So that's, uh, okay. we have your calendar up, Brian. March 22nd. March 22nd, is that all right for everyone? Mayor, yes? Um, I would be out of town, but I could get online. Okay, perfect. And I think that is the end of our agenda for the utility committee meetings. Someone want to make a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second.
All in favor? Aye. 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 everybody. It brings us back to the uh, commissioner meeting. Uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Thank you. You bet. <laughs> <laughs>